Hi, Jamie Davis here from Nacho Annual 2013 in Dallas, and we're going to be talking about how to better engage our public with preparedness from the public health. Coming right up. So I want to introduce my very special guest. I have Monica Shock Spana here, who uh, is going to be talking. Monica, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some some information and data you you collected and, and uh, of uh, about how the health departments are engaging their communities and preparedness and, and things like that. Absolutely. But um, before we get to that, why don't you tell folks a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm actually trained as a social scientist, so I'm very interested in how communities are able to uh, confront extreme events, cope with them and recover from them. And I'm a senior associate with the UPMC Center for Health Security. And we're interested in influencing policy practice in ways that reduce the health consequences of disasters and epidemics. Excellent. So tell me a little bit, we, we talked a little bit before we started recording, sure. but um, let's go over some of that again. Um, what you, uh, how you initially started this uh, survey, I guess, or uh -huh. collection of this data, and then and we'll move into uh, what the data showed you. Sure, absolutely. Um, I think everyone in public health is aware of the premium that the federal government has placed on partnerships with communities, individuals, uh, businesses, uh, community-based and faith-based organizations with regard to public health emergency preparedness. That is, the government can't manage these kinds of events on, the, on its own, and so mm -hmm. we need to involve the full, uh, uh, full measure of society's resources. Um, health departments serve as that entity that reaches out into the community and says, come and partner with us, uh, and these are the reasons why we need your help. Um, now, that raises the good question of whether health departments who have this national strategic burden uh, uh, have the resources that they need in order to carry out this important work. And so that was the context for a national survey of local health departments about how they are engaging their community partners in the preparedness enterprise, what resources they're using, and what they still need. And, and it found that uh, people were being doing this in a variety of different ways and doing a good job of it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think that was a, a key contribution of the study is just being able to tell the story of the good work that's going on out there. Um, and so health departments are, are moving from the least intensive to the lo uh, most intensive community engagement activities. So a whole continuum of activities from you know, on the one end, distributing, uh, say, brochures to seniors about disasters and your medications, uh, all the way over to engaging their community in conversations about the difficult topics, uh, such as how do you allocate scarce medical resources in a disaster, and then everything in between, um, from holding town uh, hall meetings to uh, recruiting, training, and deploying volunteers. So. Uh, what's interesting is um, even the smallest health departments have been able to engage in the activities across this continuum because there's a, there's a concern that it's only the only the big guys that can right. do the more intensive stuff. Um, this doesn't uh, I don't, I don't want to uh, uh, devalue the importance of size, but it seems like everyone's doing a great job, but they want to do better. Now, for those that are engaging in the more uh, uh, in, in, in more in depth with their communities yes. um, you said you discovered something about how they were focusing on this topic in, in their departments right um, I guess the the uh, it would be good if I explained the concept of intensity yeah and by community engagement intensity we mean is the health department helping build up community capacity to protect its well-being uh, and its welfare uh, in the context of disasters. So is it providing knowledge, skills, and material resources to the community so that they can engage in self-directed efforts at improving their health? So that's a community capacity. Um, and the health departments that are, are leading 
on this particular topic that is engaging in intense activities uh, have made it a strategic priority for the health department. Um, I think many of us in public health practice and policy know that uh, a, a robust operating budget is important as are skilled and committed staff um, and our findings certainly underscore the importance of those two factors um, but it also underscore the importance of if you want to call it organizational culture um, and so whether or not the top leadership was invested in this objective mattered uh, and whether or not the health department had uh, a formal policy um, that is uh, you know uh, an explicit uh, articulation of the significance of community engagement, an intentionality to do it in the future, and the setting of objectives. That, that, that cultural um, commitment and investment was important, uh, on par with funding and staff, which I think is a pretty significant that's, finding. That's very interesting because we, we, I think everyone focuses so much on funding, funding, we need more, right. we need more uh, monetary resources in, in order to carry these things out. But something as simple as a mission statement or a vision mm -hmm. for an agency can, can have a big impact on how the, the members of that organization approach these in their day-to-day -day activities in public health. Yeah, I think that was some of our best good news for local health departments that are really, really struggling uh, with uh, uh, smaller budgets than in the past and smaller staff. Um, now, the, the findings did underscore the importance of an operating budget as well as uh, skilled, committed staff, but on par with those uh, influences was this uh, endorsement and formal policy of community engagement, which can be carried out even during days of, of smaller budgets. Um, I think it's also a clear indication to the federal uh, public health partners that how they can intervene to make life better and improve resources for health departments includes perhaps something as providing technical guidance such as in what does a template look like for uh, a community engagement strategy for emergency preparedness uh, in addition to uh, continuing to, f to fund our health departments so that they have the operating budgets and the staffs that they need. So moving forward, we have this, we have this survey, we have uh, some really interesting and groundbreaking data that we've, we've been able to pull from it and make some conclusions. Uh, what, are, what are the next steps? Where do we move forward from here? Well, um, I think it's important to get the word out on the street, so to speak, that agency culture and leadership matter with regard to the ability of agencies to engage in these more intensive community engagement uh, activities. Um, so we'll certainly be publishing this uh, and disseminating the information. Uh, that's one of the reasons why um, I, who led the research team, and he, I'm here at the annual NACHO meeting to make sure that practitioners um, are given this good news, uh, that there is an intervention, so to speak, that they can uh, enact to improve their community engagement activities. Um, so that they can hang in there uh, until we get to a point economically, so to speak, that we can, in public health, have the robust operating budgets and staff that we need. Um, so next steps is, uh, I like to think that we're actually giving people empirical evidence, you know, the cold hard facts, so that they can go back to their political leaders mm -hmm. uh, and top decision makers and let them know, look, we, we are entrusted with this national objective. Here's what we need to do it, uh, and we need your support. Uh, and that was a, a key objective of the study, is, is giving people the facts, which is if you want community engagement and resilience to be um, key factors in national security and health security, um, look at that commitment requires um, a certain sw uh, set of resources. And uh, um, so that's what we're hoping that the, the study does for people. We, we at the Health Security Center will be briefing it out also to, to federal <clears throat> policymakers so that they understand how it is that they can help their local health department partners. Great. 
Well, is, there, is there some place that people can find uh, some, some references to this data or wh how they can contact you perhaps if they want to find out more about what you discovered? Sure. Uh, there are some preliminary findings that you can find online at our group's website. Uh, the Center for Health Security at UPMC. Okay. You can just Google that. Um, and I certainly welcome individual emails uh, for preliminary reports. And that's mshock, S-C-H-O-C-H, at upmc.edu. So I look Excellent. forward to sharing the results. And we'll have that show up on the screen so uh, people great. can take a look at it there thanks, when, they, when it comes up. Um, Monica, thanks so much for sharing sure. this with the, the information with me. This is exciting uh, to, to find out some of the, the things that, that you discovered in this survey. Well, thanks for the opportunity uh, to disseminate the results to a larger audience online. Thanks Great. very much. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for checking out this segment from NATO Annual 2013. As always, I'm Jamie Davis. Remember to stay safe and stay tuned here for more from NATO Annual.